Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. Here, I have a great article for you guys from Fierce Wireless. I will leave a link to it in the description so you guys could check it out. So it's almost over. And I think even looking at it objectively, I think T-Mobile's 5G lead is very close to being at the end. Verizon narrowly beats T-Mobile in 5G upload speeds from Open Signal. So keep in mind, Verizon still lacks scale compared to T-Mobile, and they still don't have all of the blocks cleared and on air yet that are now clearing. And they're already beating T-Mobile in the 5G category. So the window of opportunity has definitely narrowed for T-Mobile. Now, how can T-Mobile maintain that lead and, and, and really push that envelope? I think, I truly believe they have to increase spending. They have to add more capital. The 9 to 10 billion is not going to be enough for them to maintain the leadership. They had a two-year head start on mid-band. They had about a four-year head start, if not more, on low-band. So, of course, the availability piece is going to be with T-Mobile for uh, a while longer. That's the 5G availability. That's something that T-Mobile is likely going to win on many more reports. But the speed, the network, the quality, I think Verizon is going to overtake them here in, in the next quarter or two. I truly believe it. The B block is clearing. Verizon only has the A and the B block. They're getting more radios on sites very quickly. They are spending more. They had a specific set of capital set aside for just C-band. Not anything else. They were just literally spending billions, you know, five, six billion dollars a year specifically for C-band. Just C-band. That's it. And it's showing. They have the crews on board. They have the personnel to deploy it. And it's going up very quickly. Almost 60% of their entire grid is on their own fiber. So that's going to scale and be provisioned to 10 gig backhaul. They're going to pick up speeds very quickly. It won't take long. Once that A block is fully theirs and AT&T has moved off, that entire A block goes to 100 megahertz contiguous. Then they aggregate another block, the B block, and whatever they have there, that's also contiguous. Yes, to get to that 140 or 200, whatever, you do have to aggregate two blocks, but the blocks are contiguous. So that helps. That helps make performance more efficient, and it should help T-Mobile, I mean, uh, uh, Verizon with uplink, downlink, and, and everything else. T-Mobile, they, they can combat this, but they have to spend more. They have to spend more to do things quicker, like scaling to 10 gig backhaul. That requires capital, and in order for them to do that faster, they have to spend more. They can spend more. They said they can. They, they set this at the investors' day. They told this to shareholders they could spend more if they choose to. They, could, they said they could literally set aside 2 to $3 billion annual capex on just millimeter wave alone. So they have the financial, uh, financial means to do this. They're, making, they're, they're generating cash. It's showing in the free cash flow. They have, they have a guided free cash flow of $20-plus billion by 2025. They can take $3 billion out of that $20 and, and still have $17, $17 billion in free cash flow and deploy an additional $3 billion worth of equipment. So whatever they choose to do, they, they have to be feeling that, that competitive pressure on the networking side. The business side, the share taking, the growth, the, that's still going to be T-Mobile. I don't see that changing. No matter what happens, Verizon could have a median download speeds of 600 megabits a second. T-Mobile is still going to be the growth leader in the industry. But the whole marketing narrative, the leadership position that T-Mobile has placed themselves in, it's in jeopardy. And Verizon is letting it be known by these reports. And in the future, I just see Verizon getting even more aggressive as they, as they can smell the blood. Like, hey, T-Mobile is, we're about to defeat them. Let's, let's put our foots to the, to the gas and, and, and let's go. And I, and I can see, see Verizon doing that simply for the fact that they want to they wanna have the best network. That's what they say. They are the premium network. And they want to really push that narrative. And in order to do so, 
if all of the third party testing firms show that Verizon's winning, I mean, you, you, you have to, you know, if it quacks like a duck, sounds like a duck, it's probably a duck. So in this case, again, if all of them show Verizon's the fastest, they have the best network, the largest network, and it's on all of them, then it's, it's likely true. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Let me know if you think T-Mobile will lose its leadership. I think it's coming very soon. I don't think it'll take much longer. Just too much money going into it, too much investment, too much, too much spent on the spectrum itself, too many contiguous blocks. It will eventually weigh T-Mobile down. Now, like I said, T-Mobile will be able to combat, but they have to spend more. They have to get more uh, upgraded strand mounts the small cells that they have out there they have to upgrade those with n41 they got to work on getting that entire spectrum uh, uh contiguous even the part even some of the parts that they own there's education boards sonic wave is the company here that owns it they need a they need a they need to make it con contiguous and then you know densify and that's one way they could combat this but they would have to spend more to accelerate this faster. And in the meantime, Verizon, in my opinion, is going to take that lead. So make sure you guys stay tuned for more. Like, share, subscribe, follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. See y'all in the next one. Peace.